Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hiba and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at the University of Manchester. So most of you applying to medicine are now at the point where you've had the majority of your interviews. Some of you have may even started to hear back and started to get offers as well. Hopefully most of you will have had or in the next few weeks will receive more than one offer. And at that point, you'll be faced with the very difficult decision of deciding which university to put as your firm choice. When you were initially choosing which universities you want to apply to, Yes, you will have been thinking a little bit about which universities you actually want to study at. However, let's be honest, at that point, the majority of the decision is based around what you got in your UCAT score, what your GCSEs are and what your predicted A-levels are in order to maximise the chance of you actually getting an interview. So now at this point, you've done your interviews, you've got your offers, you're almost at the end of the journey and the decision of which university to firm is now entirely up to you. And that can be a really, really difficult decision because it's going to determine what the next five or six years of your life will look like. So in this video, I'm going to guide you through how to make that decision. I'm first going to talk a little bit about the factors that you need to consider when making the decision. And then I'm going to talk a bit about what extra things you can do to help you make that decision. Some of them even as soon as you click off this video. So the first thing that you're going to need to consider is the grades that that university requires you to achieve in order for you to actually be accepted. As I mentioned, once you've got your offers, you're almost at the end of the journey. Almost. You still have your A-levels left to do and you still need to achieve the grades required for your offer. So when deciding which university offer to firm, a huge, huge thing to consider is whether or not you can realistically achieve the grades that they require you to achieve. For example, if your A-level predictions are three A's and the university is asking for three A stars, just make sure you give that a careful think before you firm that choice. Now, I'm definitely not saying that you can't be ambitious and if you feel that you can achieve grades higher than your predicted grades, then definitely go for it. But if you think it's not realistic for you, then maybe consider another university. The next factor is the distance that the university is from home. A really, really important thing that you need to consider is how far you want to be from home. If you know that you're going to prefer to live at home or stay as close to your parents or your old friends as possible, for whatever reason that may be, then of course the university that's closest to you is going to be the best choice for you. However, if you're the type of person who's really keen to travel and you really want to experience living in a different part of the country and you don't mind being a couple of hours drive away or even having to fly, then you're probably not going to have the best experience if you stay in the same city that you've always lived in. The next factor that you need to consider in making your decision is the location of the university. And this is slightly different to the last point because you can have two universities that are the same distance from home, but they're at complete opposite locations. You want to ask yourself whether you'd be more comfortable in a big city or if you want to go and study in a small town, for example. I've lived in Manchester all of my life. And for that reason, I really wanted to experience moving to a small town for university because Manchester Manchester is such a huge city and I just wanted to experience a different lifestyle. Due to various other factors, I obviously ended up staying in Manchester, but of course this is something that you want to think about and you want to kind of think about what your preference is. When considering location, you also want to consider what there is around the university to do. So for example, if you're a person who really enjoys going clubbing and you know that you want to do that regularly when you're at university, if you end up going for a university that's in the countryside in Wales, then that's probably not going to provide you with the best experience. And trust me when I say no matter how good the university or the course is, if you don't enjoy the city that you're living in, you are going to end up being miserable. The next factor that you need to consider is whether you like the course structure at that medical school. Now that you've actually got your offers, you need to consider whether you really prefer a PBL course or really prefer a lecture-based course. Again, when you're first applying to medicine, your initial choice is based around your UCAT score, your exam results. So whether a course is PBL-based or lecture-based is usually on the lower side of the priorities. It's likely that you'll have applied to a mixture of different course structures and when you went to the PBL interviews you would have said oh I really think I'm suited well to PBL and when you went to the lecture-based universities you would have said I really think I'm well suited to lecture-based work because of course you want to do well in the interview you want to get the place at that university but now that you're actually making the final decision I recommend that you really do a deep dive into your past and try and figure out which kind of learning approach would be the best for you. When you're considering the university's course structure, you also want to consider any extra things that they might be offering at their university, such as maybe they help you learn a language, or maybe they help you do research on a certain topic that you're interested in, or maybe they let you go abroad for a semester. So just make sure that you know everything about the course and you're considering whether or not the structure of that course would be the best for you. The next thing I'd say you need to consider is accommodation at that medical school. 90% of you will be moving out for university 
university and for that reason accommodation is really important to consider. It's going to be really difficult to live somewhere for five or six years if you have any sort of problem with the accommodation, whether it's too far from campus, whether it's shared and you don't want shared accommodation, whether it's not catered and you require catering and so forth. I remember completely, completely falling in love with the accommodation at Hull York University. In the year that I was starting medical school, they had just built this new student accommodation that looked like it came out of a magazine. And I remember I could really picture myself living there and it was one of the things that was really drawing me to pick Hull York Medical School. After accommodation, the next thing that makes sense to talk about is cost. And not just of the accommodation, but of living in that city in general. One of your offers may be for a medical school in a small city where the cost of living isn't too high and the other might be for a medical school in London where the cost of living is really really high. So something to consider is how expensive it would be to accept that offer as compared to accepting another offer. The last factor that I think would be important to consider is whether or not the university is going to provide you with any extra support or any amenities that you think you might need. For example some universities might offer students a bursary if their household income is below a certain number and that can actually be a really really huge factor for some students in choosing which university to go to. Other examples would be if you know you want to go to a university that has a specific resource in their library or has a specific society then that can be really important in influencing your decision. So now I'm going to give you some advice on the things that you can do yourself in order to help you begin making that decision and some of these things you can even do as soon as you click off this video. So the first thing is to research the universities. Now don't click off just yet, I know you will have been doing research from the moment you put your application in up until now. However, now that you know there's a good chance of you going to this university and that they've given you an offer, you really want to research high and low on their website in order to find all the information that you need to make your choice. I can guarantee you that you'll never find all of the information that you need to make your choice on just one page on their website. So you're going to really have to do some digging on several different pages on their website to find out all the details. The next thing that you want to do is to attend offer holder days. Once you've been made an offer by the university, every university will ask you to attend an offer holder day. Even if you've been to open days at this university before, I would highly recommend that you actually go along to these offer holder days because everyone attending will actually have an offer and the information that they're going to be giving on those days is very specific to you as a potential student joining them, which is different to open days where pretty much anyone and everyone can come. It's also going to be a great opportunity for you to ask any questions that you might have. I remember when I went to my offer holder day for Hull York Medical School, it was such a lovely way to actually get to know the city because the medical school knew that everyone who's attended today actually does have an offer they'd arranged for an open roof bus tour for the students and their families and we basically went on a bus tour of the entire city and it was just a lovely way to get to know the place and it's not something that usually happens at a general open day. The next thing you want to do is speak to current students who are on the medicine course at that university. Whether it's at offer holder days or another event or just talking to someone privately that you may know goes to that university, it's a really good idea to speak to current students because they are in your future shoes if that makes sense. They're going through the course that you're going to be going through so you could argue that there's no one better than current students to actually answer your questions. Whenever I get questions about the University of Manchester, I'm always told that my answers have been really helpful because I've been able to offer a viewpoint that other people haven't been able to offer so far. So it is really valuable to talk to a current student and if anyone has any questions about the University of Manchester, feel free to ask them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Another thing you could do is to ask the admissions office at the medical school. You can always ask tutors and admission staff on offer holder days or other events like that but don't forget you can still email them. They'll always be able to help you no matter which stage of the application process you're at and they'll always be able to guide you in the right direction. Next I would say to discuss with your friends and family. The decision of which university you should study at is one that should be yours entirely. However, I do think that if you're really stuck, friends and family are really great people to ask. Just take your parents, for example. Most parents will know their children quite well and will be able to provide an additional viewpoint on which sort of environment they think you're going to get on well in, what sort of things you might struggle with at that university. They'll just be able to help you make that decision. Obviously, make the final decision on your own, but friends and family do often know you more than you think and will be able to help you more than you think as well. The next thing you can do to help is to look at rankings and reviews of that university. I would say that you should do this with a bit of caution because no matter how good the university is or the course is, there's always going to be something that that university lacks. And we do find that people who have had negative experiences are much more likely to come online and review something rather than someone who's had a good experience. So 
often reviews are quite negatively biased. Just because a university is lower on the rankings, it doesn't mean you're going to come out of it as a bad doctor and vice versa. And I do just want to say with a course like medicine, the ranking of the university doesn't really have any impact on how likely you are to get a job. However, I would say if you're really, really stuck and you've considered everything else and you still can't decide, then maybe you can use the rankings as a tiebreaker. Now, something that I highly, highly recommend that you do once you've done everything else that I've mentioned in this video is something that I did, and that is to write a pros and cons list for every university that you're considering. Literally just grab a scrap piece of paper and a pen and write all of the pros and cons of each university that you're considering. And this is really, really going to help you actually visualize which university is looking like the best one for you, rather than just having it as a jumble of thoughts flying around in your head. Trust me, it sounds simple, but it is going to be really effective. Finally, I'd say that if you have a gut feeling that you should go to a certain university or you shouldn't go to a certain university, I think you should follow your gut because it's almost always right. If you feel like your heart is drawn towards a certain university but people are still saying that it, it might not be the right one or you might not think it's 100% perfect, if it still feels right then I would say go for it because often following your gut leads you to making the best decisions. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope that was helpful and it does help you a little bit in making your decision. I remember when I was making my choice for medical school I was so so stuck between Manchester and Hull York and it was probably the most difficult decision I've had to make in my life just because the decision does have such a huge impact on what the rest of your life is going to look like. But I'd say follow the steps in the video and hopefully by the end of it it'll become really clear which university is looking like the best one for you. If you did find the video helpful then I'd be really really grateful if you could subscribe to my channel and also like this video, it really really helped me out. Congratulations to everyone who's finished their interviews and everyone who has received an offer, even if it's just one, you've worked so so hard for this and fingers crossed you're all going to be starting medical school in September. Thank you so so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.